Esto es amor de verdad Nadie lo puede dudar Step up to craft beer Dino Light Lager has a crisp, refreshing Caribbean-style flavor Boricua beer, craft ale Full body flavor for the true beer drinkers Stop drinking beer water Dino Craft Light Lager and Boricua Strong Craft Ale Feel the rhythm Step Tap rooms are localized and they're geographic. The Hispanic community is much broader than one tap room. So what we decided to do was come out with a high quality craft beer, two high quality craft beers that appeal to the Hispanic taste and that we can distribute in all the Hispanic neighborhoods. Taino is a very light, refreshing beer. It's a, it's a social beer that you can drink probably for a good part of the evening and it'll give you a nice light feeling. It's not a heavy beer, it's very airy and it's very light, it's a 4.5 alcohol which is low for beer. The Boricua is a 6.0. Now that's a stronger beer, and we designed it to be a little bit stronger than Heineken. Heineken is a favorite in the Hispanic community, so we have a little bit more muscle than Heineken. Boricua, Boricua right now, in a very short amount of time, it's been a miracle for us because we've gotten a, a large range of acceptance at the retail level. We're in Publix, we're in ABC, Target is picking it up, we're in Sedanos, we're in Bravos, 7-Elevens are picking it up because they're concentrating more on craft beer and the Hispanic market. So what we're trying to do is do a quality beer, a high quality beer, more taste, and that the Hispanic community will like. The video is disturbing. Here's ABC's Lindsay Janice. Prosecutors in the trial of Noor Salman, showing jurors how casually her husband, Omar Mateen, entered the Pulse nightclub, casing it for 11 minutes. Through that doorway, a packed dance floor, Mateen then leaving the club, moving his car to a closer spot before coming back in, this time with his assault rifle, opening fire on that dance floor, then moving to another part of the club. Within six minutes, police entering through the lobby, their guns drawn. As they see the full horror inside, officers yelling to the wounded to get out if they can. You can walk. Shot fired. Mateen holding up in the restrooms for the next three hours. Outside, SWAT teams busting through an exterior wall. Shot fired north bathroom, shot fired north bathroom. Within moments, engaging Mateen in a gun battle, killing him, but not before he took 49 lives. Hi, I'm Danny Ramos, and welcome to this week's edition of Hispanic Speak Out TV, brought to you every week statewide on Spectrum Cable Networks. Uh, we'll be broadcasting a different show in Jacksonville starting April 1st, uh, covering the Jacksonville area, just letting you guys know that. It'll also be broadcast on Spectrum Cable statewide. Um, we're sitting here and we're going to be talking about gun control and an attorney has joined us. Uh, she'll be here every week. I don't know whether that's good or bad. I think that's going to be good. I hope so. I'm going to call good. You think good? It's a good thing. It's good a good thing. thing. Okay. Yes. So she's going to be a host for Hispanic Speak Out TV starting now. Um, her name is Sandra Rivera. She's a lawyer. She specializes in criminal law. And today we're going to be talking with her about gun control and um, what the implications are and her opinion versus my opinion. Sandra, welcome to the show. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Now everybody's going to know that you're a TV host. Ta-da. Ta-da. Yeah, ta <laughs> you know, with that and you can get on the subway in New York if you pay. Right, there okay. you go. All right, so let's talk about gun control. Let's do it. All right. So everybody's, this is an emotional situation. It's not necessarily a practical situation because what happens is you get a lot of demonstrations and a lot of people are going out there saying reform, reform, reform. But I, from my point of view, I don't know what you can reform when you're dealing with mental illness mm -hmm. and the availability of guns. I mean, it's going to happen. It's going to happen again. Um, limiting handguns is not going to happen. Uh, the stocks is just going to make somebody else go to a different source. and. Just because you outlaw a gun, a type of gun, that doesn't mean it's not available. Right. 
No, and, and that's and that's exactly right. I agree with you there. We we disagree on certain things, but I definitely agree that there is no foolproof plan to to ending these mass shootings. You're right. The reality is it is going to happen again. It's going to happen more than once. There's no way that you can possibly eliminate all of the factors that go into uh, the reasons why people do this. You cannot possibly protect every uh, location, every uh, building, every school, every airport. There's no way you can do it. Um, but I think that having that action moving in a certain direction to try and um, address some of the underlying concerns. We talked about mental health. Um, that certainly is a concern. Now, there's a lot of people on both sides of that argument that say we need to address mental health. We need to get to these kids and figure out what the problem is and help them through whatever crisis they're going through. But the reality is, and you have to acknowledge the fact that a lot of people with mental illnesses are typically the victims of crimes. They aren't typically the ones who are out there committing these heinous crimes. Um, yes, if you do something like this, certainly, any, nobody would disagree that mm -hmm. there is something mentally wrong. Well, this particular wrong. kid, this particular mm -hmm. kid had mental issues. Absolutely. Now, we enter the concept of privacy with medical records because I heard on television, well, before you, um, you know, doctors should report, you know, people who have mental illness or are being treated mentally so that when they do the background check, it shows up that they have a mental illness. But you're, you're, you have a privacy situation with HIPAA law, right? Sure, absolutely. That you're not allowed to disclose um, medical records to the public. Right. So that would open that all up, and then you have issues of health insurance. You know, you have all, uh, employers have access. To say, I'm not going to hire this person because this person went to see a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Right. So it, it opens up a Pandora's box, which it could be very terrible for people that might have gone to a doctor maybe once or twice. Right, and it, it opens that door for subjectivity. I mean, the whole issue of um, assessments and evaluations of mental health is very subjective. Where do you draw the line? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, does somebody, if you check off these four boxes, do you then prohibit those people from buying guns? Well, what if they only check off two boxes? Mm -hmm. You know, so where do you draw the line and, and determine this person is too mentally ill to possess a firearm, but this person isn't? You know, and, and we saw that in the Las Vegas shooting. Nobody would have known that he had any mental illnesses. I mean, I don't recall reading anything that said he had diagnosed illnesses, that anybody said that they saw the signs coming, that he would do something like this. He was actually uh, very balanced, very stable, very wealthy. You know, he didn't have fit those factors of somebody mm -hmm. who would do something like this. And, you know, we'll never know in his situation what happened. Yeah. So, again, I but mean... But what happens is you go from one incident, and they never solved, they never came, like you're saying... In that particular situation, they were doing searching, what caused it, what caused it. I don't hear one TV show that said what caused it, right. what, what the break. And then all of a sudden, the, uh, the new situation happened in the school, and everybody forgot that. They put that to the back burner because it's not convenient because you don't have a solution with it. Correct. You know, so now we're talking about, all right, so they put armed guards in front of the school. The armed guard decided not to go in. Right. And he told everybody else not to go in. Right. So how do you deal with that situation? That's a mental situation right. also. There are too many factors that are going to um, leave us vulnerable to that. You know, and in this proposal to raise the gun uh, limit or the age limit to purchase firearms from 18 to 21, yeah, it has its... Uh, it has its positives. I'm not. I'm not in disagreement with that. You know, I think you do a lot of maturing between 18 and 21. I think you know, but you can't ignore the fact that all of these mass shooters, a lot of them were over 21. So what? You know, no. does it make a difference? Sure. I'm sure it would make some difference. Are you ever going to be able to calculate that and determine? You know, because we raised the gun limit or the age limit to 21, we saved this many people. You're not going to be able to do that. But I understand there have to be. Uh, something done to to account for the fact that these things are occurring and that they're occurring in schools. I mean, those are, you know, they're vulnerable. This is, a lot of this is all a psychological comfort zone, politically thrust forward mm -hmm. to make the public at ease that the politicians are doing something about it because the reality is we're here on East Colonial Drive. Mm -hmm. I can walk out of this building in a half hour, okay? Tonight, I can go buy a gun on the street for 600 bucks or 400 bucks. Right. Okay, an 18-year-old or a 16-year-old can do the same thing. Right. So that's the fact that we have an underground market for illegal weapons being sold is going to continue, and it's not going to stop. 
It's just no, not going to stop. It's not. But I think in a lot of these uh, mass shootings, a lot of these guns were obtained legally. I mean, they weren't bought on the black market. They, they had access to them. Um, but what I'm, my point is this. My point is they can lock up and they can say no guns, no guns, you know, freeze all the sale of guns in the entire United States. That's not going to change the underground market. It's just going to spike That's it. That's correct. Listen, it's the reality. Create, it's going to increase the underground market. Absolutely. Well, the reality is you're not going to do away with the Second Amendment. You're not going to do away yeah. with uh, firearms. It's just not going to happen. I think that there needs to be restrictions put in place. Look, I'm a mom, too. You know, and those school shootings affect me just like anybody, anybody else, any other parent. You know, I don't want the idea that anybody could walk in with these firearms. I mean, just last week at Edgewater High School, they had to arrest another student for walking into the school with a firearm. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows what his motivation was yet, um, but I certainly think with, or hope, with all the talk about mental health, that he's just not going to become another case on that docket, that, you know, possession of a firearm at a school, that somebody is going to intervene there and figure out what prompted him. Was this mm -hmm. some kind of joke? Was this, you know, was he scared? Was he planning on something? You know, and so when we have things like that, that is what our schools need to be focused on, is these mm -hmm. students who, who feel the need and who feel the, the bravado, who have mm -hmm. the bravado to come onto school property with those things. I think that, um, you know, in the school situation, there is, and there has been, oh, the school has always been a fishbowl. It's always been totally vulnerable um, for security. This gun thing, it's always been vulnerable for drug sales because there is no monitoring of that. So you can easily buy drugs in most of the schools, you know, there's, there's, because kids are carrying it in, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right. So there hasn't been enforcement. There hasn't been the enforcement process in a lot of different levels in the school system. Sure. Teachers are not going to enforce um, the stopping the sale of drugs. You go to lunchroom, okay? You know, you can buy whatever you want, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so there's been, the tradition has been that school has been like an open place, very extremely open, and you can get away with almost anything. Right now, I know a school teacher uh, who was teaching third grade, and uh, she came up to me and I had a conversation with her. She said to me, well, I had this third grade kid come up and curse at me and tell me I can't do anything about it. What are you gonna do? Right. Send me to the office? Fine, no yeah. problem, Right. you know? So there is a certain degree of aggression on the student side. There's a certain degree of lack of control going on in the school system because we have gotten to the point where teachers cannot reinforce the management of a class. Um, they can't take students out effectively and separate them. They can't because the parents come in and there's laws and all of this. So you can't do what used to be in my school, okay? Mm -hmm. they, they would pull you out and they'd let you have it, right. literally in my time. Now you can't do that anymore. Right, and, and I can't say that, you know, you, I, I wouldn't want to see that happening no, to my kid either. All right, yeah. all right, but there's absolutely no, no <laughs> authority that a teacher has except for sitting up there and talking. Right. You know, they can't exercise authority. So there are so many weaknesses in the system. Um, they're talking about, you know, eliminating, you know, we spoke about this before, about eliminating, um, you know, automatic weapons. Mm -hmm. So, so, I have, I have guns, I'm, I'm, I'm a registered gun owner, okay? Mm -hmm. I have a, a pistol, it's a Glock, it holds 16 shells in it. It takes me less than two seconds to replenish my, my, my magazine. Literally, I can put four magazines on my belt, have over 100 bullets, and it go, whoop, two seconds, less than two seconds. And I can pop that off like, like an automatic weapon. Pa, 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 pa. And you know, it's funny, I researched that because we did yeah. have that conversation and, and I was on the opposite side. I, I didn't know that much about um, handguns and I did research that and that's correct. Um, that you can do as much or even more damage holding two Glocks and even an assault rifle. Mm -hmm. Where I stop short is, I understand, you know, our, our right to bear arms and, you know, you hide, there's a purpose for handguns. A lot of people have them in their home for protection. I still cannot get my head around what purpose, other than mass destruction, does an assault rifle serve? A hunting rifle, I get it. You want to go hunting, you go hunt. Handguns, you need it for protection, you carry it. What purpose does an assault okay, rifle have? There are people, like in every field, hobby field, mm -hmm. that go to an extreme. What does a guy need a 700 horsepower engine in his car for? Okay? Mm -hmm. What does he need it for? Well, he goes down the drag strip, and that's it. Otherwise, it sits in a garage. Right, but that's he doesn't not, use it. That, that so, doesn't have any, any uh, dangerous purpose. I mean, he may be a danger to himself going down the yeah, drag strip, yeah. but it's not going to hurt anybody. Well, the gun is not going to hurt anybody. It all depends on the user. Sure, I understand. Because a guy can get in a car, and he can run down people like they did in New York, 
and he only had a six cylinder in the car. Right. You know? So it's a matter of the user. We go back to the original mental illness and how do you control mental illness? Well, you can't. You have to, you have to advance it. You have to know before. Mm -hmm. You have to be aware. You've got to create awareness in the teachers, in everybody, even in the classroom, the kids hearing this guy, no, I'm going to come in with a gun tomorrow and I'm going to shoot you, okay? Well, there's such a stigma still around mental illness. With as many advances as we've made with it, there's a stigma around it. Nobody wants to be labeled that kid, you know, mm -hmm. the weird kid, you know, the kid who, you know, is constantly causing problems, you know, for because of whatever issues that he or she may have. Um, so, you know, we, we protect them, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of it too. I tell, you know, my son, you know, we you know, yeah, they're a little different, you know, don't worry about it, you know, like, because we don't want to talk about it, you know, we don't bring it out into the open. Well, it's got to be, that's, that has to be brought out into the open by teachers. Sure. And getting back to the other, the other subject we were talking about, I have a Glock. The Glock, I can put 16 bullets in, and I can put hollow points in there that can go through a steel door. In other words, there are different kinds of bullets. There's the bullet which will penetrate a piece of wood and a body. Mm -hmm. Then there's a, 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 a bullet that can penetrate a police car the door of a police car. And then there's a bullet that can even do worse than that. So you can buy ammo, different types of ammo, for penetration in a handgun. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, you can pop off boom, 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 with a handgun. Right. With two handguns, boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? Right. So it's, it, it all goes back to the user. Yeah. It all goes back to identifying the person who may crack. And like you said, there are times that there is no track record on right. a guy. It can happen. Right. So a lot of this stuff that we're going through is all political, you know. It's all political, keeping people happy, you know, because you and I know they're never going to eliminate guns yeah, in the well, United people States. People just want to make sure, they want to see that we're not ignoring the problem. Yeah. And so the only way to show that you're not ignoring the problem and, and just throwing your hands up in defeat is by passing, you know, new bills, house laws, you know, mm -hmm. modifying certain things, you know, with the new bill that the governor just signed, you mm -hmm. know, making certain modifications. And what was included in that bill? Um, well, like well, the most important thing was raising the age limit to 21. 21. Um, I got that, and, yeah. and I agree that 18 is very young, sure. although you can go into the armed forces, but then you get the training. Exactly. And, you're, and you get the mental training, and you get the intensity of refocusing uh, a person's thoughts and handling that responsibility. Right. But an 18-year-old who is not trained properly, who can go buy a gun with a very minimal, you know, you can go and take mm -hmm. an hour course and, and, right. and get a gun. Well, I think it's telling that you need to be 21 in order to be able to apply for a concealed weapons permit, mm -hmm. but you can purchase a gun at 18 years old. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the, the two just don't make sense in my head. I mean, and that's it, what they passed? Uh, well, no, that's how that's the existing law. That's okay. what the current law is. Okay. But right now, or that's what it was, but right now you have to, it pretty much matches up what, you know, what the existing law is. So you have to be 21 in order to, to purchase a okay. gun. Um, you know, and then there's this talk of... Are you for teachers carrying weapons, trained teachers? I'm not. I'm okay. not. I think... Um, I, I've heard a lot of arguments about it, and, and I think one of the main things is, look, you know, I, I can be trained in a gun, but I'm not in those high-stress situations on a daily basis like somebody in the military or somebody in law enforcement. So I can have all the training, but if I'm faced with a high-stress situation like that, that may or may never happen, you know, I can only speak for myself. I'd probably be shaking like a leaf trying to hold a gun. You want me to be holding a gun? I think the safety measures have to be but put again, in place. But again, it's training because they're not talking about having people who don't have training. They're talking about people with military backgrounds that are teaching, they're retired. Mm -hmm. They're talking about retired police officers. They're talking about people who have been trained in security. So they have been, they're not just talking about any teacher. They're talking, at least Trump was. Trump was talking about people who have extensive backgrounds in handling firearms who are now teachers. And what happened in Parkland? You had a school resource officer who had all the training in the world. And what did that do? It didn't do anything. So, okay, so you've got a teacher who, well, you know. Well, you know, you're going to run into a situation because the guy in, in that he just didn't want to go in. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't want to put himself in harm's way. Right. And not only that, he told everybody else not to go in. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, if I understand, I, I heard the recording, and um, he said stay away from the building to everybody. Mm -hmm. You know? So that's... A poorly trained, and that's another part that you got to look at, mm -hmm. is how are we effectively training police officers in small towns 
in small municipalities compared to the extensive training that other police officers get in major cities because they're urban and because they have a bigger budget. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your local uh, police officer in a small town is not the same guy and facing the same issues that a, an urban cop faces when he's in New York City or he's sure. in Chicago or he's in LA. Right. There's a whole defense mechanism that's different, you know? And so, so then in these small towns, what we, we can expect that, you know, we're more of a sitting duck than somebody in well, urban. Well, I, I think that you got to take the police department and you got to create a standard for training mm -hmm. for, for weapons and situations of crisis. Because, okay, I'm a cop, you know, I go and have my Dunkin' Donuts and, you know, drive around in my car and give out a tip parking ticket. When a real situation comes up, this was a total failure mm -hmm. of a local police department on doing their job because they were there specifically to protect the kids. Sure. That was a specific purpose, and they failed completely, absolutely failed. They ran away. Right. They actually ran away. Yeah. You know? So what happens in those situations where, you know, you have one teacher in the school that uh, is permitted to carry, and, you know, a shooter enters in another part of the school? You know, what does that do for my child who comes into contact with that shooter? With well, the, you it's know, better then, than not having a cop or 15 minutes away or 10 minutes away or in the parking lot who doesn't want to come in. You're right, but what's better? I mean, better? the more people that are trained on premise, the better off you are. If you have two, three teachers that have are previously been trained uh, in, in military or whatever, you have a better chance of survival than you do of, of nobody. You know, you're just a shooting gallery. Well, and then if you implement certain safety measures within the school, whether it's, you know, safe rooms in each classroom, whether it's, uh, you know, automatic uh, smoke bombs that come out that can be set off mm -hmm. if there's a shooter on school, something that could potentially... An automatic lockdown on doors. You push exactly. the button, all the doors in the classrooms exactly. and reinforce doors so that it's, it's contained. Correct. Having one teacher on the other side of the school who can take out a shooter is not going to do me or my child any, mm -hmm. any good if my child is over here on the side mm -hmm. where the scooter yeah, is. Yeah, so. yeah. It's, it's a very difficult situation politically, mentally, you know, it, it goes into all the privacy laws of, 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 uh, of medical records, which mm -hmm. is, you know, everybody is very sensitive about that, sure. you know, because it involves your health insurance, it involves your employment. If your employer is paying for your uh, insurance, and all of a sudden, he sees that you're a higher liability, he might not hire you. Right. Or he might say, hey, you know what, we don't need you anymore because we're not, you know, we're not producing, you know, and get rid of them for some other reason. Right. But so, like I said, there is no verifiable link between mental illness, whether it's depression, whether it's anxiety disorders. There's no link to these shootings. I mean, no, nothing substantial. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, anybody who commits these crimes... Something's well, you know, definitely the, 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 off with you. These, but. these shootings are all a recent situation. You know, I don't ever remember going back years and years and years that mm -hmm. there were mass shootings in schools. Mm -hmm. That all happened, uh, in, I believe, in the Connecticut shooting when it really started. But there may have been one here, one there, but not mass shootings. Mm -hmm. This is, an, and everybody says that's because of assault weapons. I don't think so. Because you don't need an assault weapon to do assault weapon damage. Right. You know, right. you just don't. Right. No, I mean, there was a, I, I recall a reading an article about a mass shooting in Australia. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what year it was, but it was before, you know, it started the 80s becoming, or something, yeah, yeah it start, before it started becoming an issue here. Um, but it was in a school in Australia, and, you know, they took a more dramatic approach. They mm -hmm. eliminated all mm -hmm. guns. Um, so the argument was. You know, well, there you go. We have no shootings now because we el eliminated the guns. I don't think it's going to happen here. But, yeah, these things have been going on, whether it's uh, guns, whether it's knife attacks, whether it's vehicle attacks, uh, you know, acid attacks. There is always that element of the population that is a little deranged, that they're going to want to hurt or, other people. Or a terrorist like the car thing in, in New York. Exactly. The guy didn't shoot anybody, but he hit 17 people right. or 16 people with a car. Right. So almost anything can be used as a mass murder weapon, almost anything. Sure. It's all dependent upon the person. The person is the person that uses the weapon. The person is the person that uses the car. The weapon does not use itself. Right. But proper training and awareness is very important. The 18-year-old thing, I think, is right on the button. Yeah. I think that, you know... 18-year-olds um, are not mature enough, like you said, unless mm -hmm. they get very specific military training. 
they're not mature enough to have the responsibility of a weapon. Right. You know, there's that. There's too much of a tendency to fool around. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and, and we haven't even touched on you know the workplace shootings where yeah. those aren't even. I mean, they're random to a certain degree, but they're not random in the location. You know. Yeah. And, I mean, those those have been happening. I think we live we live in a society that has over 300 million people. That's like saying, okay, nobody's going to catch a cold. Mm-hmm. You know, of course it's going to happen. Right. It's just going to happen based upon the sheer volume of people that we're dealing with in this society. You're going to have people that have cancer. You're going to have people that are going to have all kinds of illnesses. You're going to have people that have car crashes. I don't know how many people die a year in car crashes, 30,000 or 40,000 a mm -hmm. year. So what do you do? You want to solve it? Eliminate cars. Right. You know? Just yeah. eliminate cars. You know? I mean, it, look, I, I don't, so, I'm not a gun person. You're a gun owner. I'm not. It, guns don't do it for me. I'm not a, I mean, I'm not a gun enthusiast like mm -hmm. a lot of people are collectors. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not a collector. But I have two guns. And they're strictly, strictly, strictly used for the potential situation. I remember a time, um, and I never forget this, um, I, I saw the interview of a woman on television years ago. And she was a, a licensed person. And she left her gun in the car and went to have dinner with her parents in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And she left the gun in the car. Okay? A shooter came in and shot 18 people, okay? wow. including her mother and father and her. She lived. Mm -hmm. Her parents died. And she, in that interview, said, if I would have taken my gun in, I might have saved half of those people, including my parents. Mm -hmm. But she left the gun in the car. Right. You know? She could have responded. Now, that's, that's the approach I take. You know, that's my approach. I don't want to be a sitting duck. Mm -hmm. You know, if something happens, one in a million, one in five million, okay, I get that. You know, but I just don't want to be there with absolutely no response mechanism. You know, so I carry a gun. And you have to be very careful in your judgment of response because mm -hmm. you cannot, you don't pull a gun out. Just for anything. You don't. Mm -hmm. I've never pulled a gun out. Mm -hmm. I've never pulled it out. Never. And, you know, you can get into an argument with people. You can see situations that are very tense. You know, I also carry mace. Right. Okay, I carry a very small thing of mace, you know, which is really the thing that I would use if somebody tried to mug me, mm -hmm. I would use the mace, well, not and, the gun. And that's you, and I think that's where a lot of people get concerned is, okay, you're rational and you're stable uh, and level-headed about knowing when the proper scenario is to take out that gun. I think what people worry about is, what about those other people? You know, gonna, those people who are trigger people, happy. But those people, they're there, and you, there's nothing you can do about it because mm -hmm. we're 300 million people. Right. Well, 330 million people, uh, well, they're the there no matter what. It's the response of trying to solve everything all at once. You can't, in a you mass can. society, you mm -hmm. can't do that. You can't, we have multiple problems in our society, and we try to solve them as a mass solution. And this is a very, very niche. Mm-hmm. It requires a massive amount of effort to try to solve a very uh, a, a problem that takes an hour, a half hour. And it's going to be very difficult to do with, with all of the uh, ramifications of legality. Right. Well, I mean, and if it hasn't happened yet after all of the school shootings, I mean, I thought after Sandy Hook, I mean, that was it, you know, yeah. that, that nobody was going to stand for that. And what happened? That kind of faded into the background. Just like the last well. one in Vegas. It just mm -hmm. faded into the background. Now the next one. And we're going to be talking about another one. Mm -hmm. This one is going to fade into the background. Oh, we passed the law. What did the law do? There's going to be another occurrence. And this law that they just passed is not going to do anything to prevent that. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. It's going to, we're not going to go just because the governor passed the law and the legislator passed the law. That all, Oh, our, there's not going to be any more shootings. There's not going to be any more shootings. That's right. That's... I worry more about the copycat ones anyway, you know, yeah. I mean, it, just seeing all of the the coverage, you know, that, that, that people, these shootings you know, are getting, yeah. you know, if people are attracted to but that. But that's also mental. Absolutely. That's also Absolutely. mental, so it will happen again. You know what? We had a great discussion. Yes. Okay, you come back next week or you're going to bail out? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here next week. Okay. All right. And this is Sandra Rivera. She's an attorney that specializes in criminal law. Um, if you have an issue or you want to talk to her, look her up in the book. Sandra Rivera, attorney at law in Altamont Springs, Florida. And my name is Danny Ramos. And uh, we will see you next week here at Hispanic Speak Out. We'll be bringing you another topic of interest. We are doing a seminar on human trafficking uh, in the studio. Um, if you're on our email list, you will receive that notice probably in the next few days. This is Danny Ramos, and we'll see you next week on Hispanic Speak Out. Stay tuned to Latina Role Models, which is coming up shortly. See you next week.